Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. My name is Connor. I hope you're having a great day. And in this video, we're going to solve a pretty quick problem on leak code in both Python and APL, my favorite programming language, with the goal of hopefully people being more familiar with the Python language as it's a lot more popular than APL. And then we're basically going to convert the Python solution into APL, uh, which hopefully will make it more understandable. So this problem is entitled redistribute characters to make all strings equal. It's from Leak Code Contest 245, which happened a couple weeks ago, or if you're watching this far in the future, maybe a couple years ago. And it's pretty straightforward. Basically, it gives you a list of strings, and it's asking you to return true if it's possible to reorganize the characters in the strings, uh, across strings potentially, such that you end up with all equal strings uh, in your final list. So here, at, uh, for our first example, we have ABC in our first string, AABC in our second string, and BC in our third string, which obviously are not equal. But if we take one of the A's from our second string and put it at the front of our third string, we get three strings that are all equal being ABC. And in our second example, uh, we have A, B, and A as our two strings. And because there's only one B, we're not going to end up with equal strings, no, regardless of how we sort of permute and reorganize the characters. So the key to this problem is basically um, figuring out what the frequency of characters ac across all the strings are in total, and then checking to make sure that each of the frequencies of the characters are divisible by the number of strings uh, that are originally in our list. So uh, figure out the frequency of each of the characters and then check is each one divisible by uh, the number of strings in our list, which for our first example is three and our second example is two. And then if all of them are, then we can return true, otherwise return false. So let's hop over into IPython. We'll solve this first in Python and then we'll hop over to APL and solve it in APL. So here we are in IPython. I have preloaded into S here our uh, our example that we had. Note that I've added a few more C's into the third string just to make the problem slightly more interesting, but the result will be true at the end of the day. And the first thing we want to do is concatenate the strings in our list just to in, into a single string. And uh, the function we can use to do that is called um, join, which I totally misspelled right there. And basically what join does is it takes a delimiter and then uh, inserts that delimiter in between the strings. If you don't want a delimiter, you can just use an empty string and then this will join it together. So pretty straightforward, we now have one string now, and what we want at this point is the frequency uh, of each of the characters. So we can use a uh, collection, aka a data structure in Python called counter. Uh, so I believe if we go from collections import counter, uh, invalid syntax, because I misspelled import. Now we can take our expression uh, or our string, pass this to counter, and it's going to give us essentially a dictionary of all of the unique characters that show up and the frequency. Note that we don't actually care about the characters A, B, and C, so we can just get the frequencies by calling a method on this collection called values, and this gives us back the uh, frequencies. So this is perfect. It's exactly what we want. And at this point, we just need to check, are each of these divisible by the length of our uh, initial list, so the number of strings in our uh, initial list that we're given. So we can do this with, uh, to start, a uh, list comprehension. So if we go x uh, modulus length of our initial list uh, for x in um, all of the frequencies, we do this and we're going to get back three zeros. So these are the remainders um, when divided by three. To change these into Booleans, we just need to check uh, if it's equal to zero, in which case it is divisible. So we're giving back three trues. And for this problem, all we need to do is basically check, are all of these uh, divisible? And uh, then we have our answer. Note that we have a list comprehension that we're passing to this function all, when really we can pass it a generator expression, which will be more efficient. And once we have this, this is our solution. So. It's pretty nice, actually, in my opinion. It's making use of join, uh, a really useful utility function, counter, a really useful collection, and then a generator expression and an algorithm or a function called all. So we are going to basically translate this exact solution into APL, and hopefully it will be uh, a pretty clear and also very interesting. So let's hop over to ride our APL editor. So here we are in Ride. I will leave uh, links in the description down below for details how to download this and how to get APL set up. But uh, we have our list of strings. And the first thing we want to do, as we did in the Python solution, is to concatenate these. And there is a single character in Python uh, called enlist. And if we pass our list of strings to enlist, it's just basically going to remove the structure and turn it into a single string. 
Uh, once we're done this, we basically want to get the frequencies which we did with the counter and the values method. So we don't have a counter collection in APL, but we do have a very, very powerful operator, aka higher order function called key. And in the simplest form, when we just pass it uh, a defund with alpha and omega um, juxtaposed with each other, we're going to get back a table of all of the unique characters or values in our string and the indices at which they show up. Um, and so we don't really care about the indices, we just care about the number of times it shows up. So if we just take the tally or the size of our second column in this table, um, we then basically get the result that we had with our counter collection in Python. So our first column here is all of the unique values. Our second column is uh, the count or the frequencies. And once again, as with the Python solution, we don't care about the unique characters. All we care about is the frequency. And uh, this is exactly what we want here. And note that we can save a single character by replacing this defund, aka lambda, or anonymous function with a composition of identity, the right tack, and we just want to compose this uh, with tally, which I accidentally just deleted. So this is one character less than the above expression, but these are both identical. So once we have this, all we need to do is check whether these are divisible. So the first thing actually we need to do is get the length or the number of strings in our original list. And we can use tally the same way that we used it above. This is going to give us back three. Once we have this, we want to uh, use tally of this and then modulus. So this is going to give us three. This is going to give us the frequencies. And so this infix uh, binary operation here, residue, aka modulus, is going to give us the remainders when we divide uh, three, three, and six divided by three. So this should give us back three different zeros, uh, which of course it does. Um, and so once we have this, similar to in Python, we just want to check, are these each equal to zero, aka are they divisible uh, by the length of our original string? This is going to give us three ones. And then we need to do an all, which the equivalent of an all is a logical and reduction. So uh, this is basically a logical and. And because we represent trues with ones, uh, this is going to only return true when we have a list of all ones. And so once we've done this, uh, we basically have a solution. So one is the equivalent of true in Python. Um, and if we want, we can put this in a function uh, called solve. Um, and I guess I should have typed that at the beginning of this. And then we can replace uh, s with omega here, which is going to be our argument. And we have to do it over here as well. Um, and so then if we go solve s, that is our function. So. We can actually do a couple slight improvements here. If you've watched any of my previous APL videos, you'll know that whenever you recognize a pattern where you have a unary function, another unary function, where they take the same argument, s and s, and then in between those two unary functions, you have a binary function, um, this is a fork. Um, so the only thing we need to do here is we need to factor the s out. So take the s and put that outside the parentheses. And then we need to make sure that this is a unary function. And because technically we have enlist and we have our key function here, uh, we need to compose these together. So this is a unary function now that does both the enlist and sort of the frequencies calculation. This is tally, which is going to be applied to s. And then uh, residue is going to be our binary function. So this actually is uh, the point free version of this. So once again, we can take solve. And we don't even need to mention an argument now. Um, so yeah, this is why I love APL so much. Um, you compare this to what we had in Python. Uh, I really do think the Python solution is it's quite elegant compared to what you have in other languages that don't have like a counter collection. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found this interesting, educational. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description down below. And yeah, uh, hope you have a great rest of the weekend, depending on when you're watching this. If not, yeah, just have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.